it, it was the audience, the clientele that made me, you know, I, I didn't make it because I made pretty pictures. And they just sort of uh, uh, enjoyed what I produce. And, and, and to young artists, um, it, it doesn't just take pretty pictures. It takes uh, people that like what you do, you know, and those are, there's millions of those. My name is Bahi Whitethorn, senior, uh, and my clans are the Reed, Yakafru, and then also the Mini Goats and Mini Goats. So what is the world and what is uh, uh, how would you describe or how, who would be professional? So we talk about things like Andy Warhol, was he an artist? Leonardo da Vinci, was he an artist? How were they artists? Were they professional or were they just different than everybody else? Beginning of school, there was no, I mean, I had no clue as to what I was gonna do. I you mean, know, uh, to fight that, I guess, is, is I had too many other interests, you know. What are you going to be in your life? What are you going to be doing in your life? And I really didn't have a, 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 a chance to think about it. And I was just a part of the, what is, I guess, a formal education. And to be asked, what do you want to do? What do you want to study? You know, that's that was uh, beyond me and everybody that I was in class with. The majority of them were wanting to be teachers. So I just said, well, sure, I'll, I'll be a teacher, you know. I think my third year in college, I just lost interest. You know, it wasn't um, what I thought it would be. There's a lot of Dharm people, dormitory, boarding school people that teachers and that saw uh, what I could do with uh, art or, you know, draw, drawing. And they encouraged me by, uh, I know one of them said that you can have this stack of paper to draw on if you do your math work, you know, homework. And which was good to work for, you know, yeah, yeah. And then a lot of them said, if you only take a little more time, make a little more time, put a little more effort, and what you like to do, good, a good uh, life as an artist. And those people had plenty. I think a lot of those people sort of, uh, I guess every, all the artwork you see here is because of them, you know? There was a time, I think when I was 34, my wife was uh, attending school. We managed to talk a lot. And there was a day I remember saying, honey, uh, I'm going to quit my job and, and, and pursue my art career because all of these people that ever commented or suggested or, or encouraged my art career, you know, they always said, if you just make a little more time or make uh, some time so you can uh, do something with the artwork. Her answer was, who's going to buy the work? You know, who's? And I just said, I have no idea. It's like being, going out to the middle of the ocean and on a platform and you sort of figure out which way to jump in. My family is a family that supports what I do. I think they understand uh, uh, the idea of having a calendar. They understand the idea that I have to do this for a living. It's the lifestyle that I have. So I had to make a choice, make a decision. So I took it to them first. And uh, the kids, um, 
they were in school, they were little, and they, they were, like they'd go off in the morning and come back at noon. So I think they were big enough to, to decide uh, t what time was. I drew a, a pie of a clock, you know, 24 hour clock. And they took it, and I'm not sure exactly how many days, but they came back with the time that they were all off to school, which is like six in the morning to 12 noon when they came back. And it's always been like that. So that's, I guess, understanding what they're thinking and the time they have is that is precious with, with them. So that was given, that was understood. Over the many, many, many year, years of doing that, uh, the family just sort of understand that I have to come over here, you know, to, to do something, to create something. It's just something that is a part of the lifestyle that we live. I was a part of the, uh, an art project for the, the new Navajo Casino, uh, Twin Arrows. And so all of a sudden I was asked, uh, uh, we want you guys to help us uh, do some artwork and chose 20 artists. I knew there was going to be times where everybody's just going to be with the profiles they came with, uh, where we're going to be trying to, we kind of looked like a group of rams in a sheep corral trying to get the upper hand over each other. And, but we managed to uh, stay in the ring and work things out and, and we did the project. We sort of played around for four days. The fifth day we really <coughs> said to each other, hey, what are we doing? Are we?" Uh, trying to outdo each other or shall we do this together? So it, it kind of rolled in together and came about in a way that everybody sort of respected each other and, and, and uh, honored each other and sort of got a routine together. And so uh, in a way we sort of uh, found that description of a, a professional artist who is Navajo. I guess uh, one is respect, two is understanding, three is listening, and then third is thinking as a unit, and the uh, fourth is honoring each other. And everybody learned about each other and everybody uh, just didn't think of themselves, you know, they thought as a group, so. So I sat down to do this story, which is my first attempt to write a story. And I wrote this story. This story, Sun Painter, is about, this is me in my chair. And then this is a time that I remember it in my childhood, which was very special. And uh, a day with my grandfather, like I said, my grandfather was always, uh, uh, would say things like, I talked to him about education, what I've learned at school, ABCs and all of this stuff. And he would say, uh, you know, in Navajo, the sheep corral, the, the garden, the cornfield, the horses, the donkeys, you know, and that's all education too, you know. And so I always thought about that, uh, how he related to what is Navajo education, I guess, you know. To actually sit down and write this story and to have it published and then to give it to him uh, in, Engl in English, uh, he he liked it because you know his dad wrote the story and his, it's his dad's story, and he, so he made him a little more Navajo. And, he, and the first thing he said, "Did you just make that up?" You know, I said, "No, this is a real story that happened when Grandpa and I spent a day during the eclipse, 
and that's what the story is. So he took it and read it. I spent a lot of time with him and where he lived, and there was a tree there behind his hogan. He come around early in the morning before at sunrise, and uh, numerous times he'd come by, sometimes almost weekly or daily or every other day to spend time, take him. He was a horse person. He, he used to be a rancher for uh, 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 close out close to Flagstaff and and so the first thing he would say in the morning is uh, instead of good morning or anything, he just kicked my feet and say come on you lazy bum when I went off to college never saw him again after that he had died in one of the winters so. yeah so I still you know there's still a special place I draw pictures of him you know sometimes <laughs> Yeah. You have to pay attention to the little things and uh, take your time doing things, you know. You, you just don't take it for granted. And uh, watch, listen, make sure you see, make sure you think, make sure you 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 are comfortable in your decisions, I guess. Uh, I guess that's one of the things that I learned from my grandfather. <clears throat> I used to go see him, and he would always uh, uh, like when when you get to his house. He would take his jeans off. You know, uh, he had two pairs of jeans. One was new and one was old. He took the old one off, and he was ready to go to the trading post. And I would listen to my music, uh, CCR, you know, way back, and just turn it up while he's sitting in the car, you know. And, and he says, "Why don't you turn it down?" Or he say, "Yeah, the kiss." And then he, I mean, I would do it, and he always say, "What's wrong with smelling the roses, uh, the, the the bushes, the, the, the you know, that's along the road?" The bugs and things. Don't you pay attention to that? You know, she listen, breathe the air a little bit. You know. So that sort of remind me of that. You know, you just sort of you're on the go. You got to do this. You got to go and, and and make things happen in the world. But you have to think and wait a little bit. You know, take your time. Do it at your leisure. You know. And that's the way, kind of the way I teach now is to. Step back a little bit. Pay attention to what you're going to do. Mentally, physically, prepare yourself. Um, I think the art w work will, will, I mean, from what I learned about art, art history and the world, what the art is, is I think my life is only a wink in the life of my work, you know, so whatever. And I think I'm a historian enough that I portrayed a lot of the, the forms and, and culture in my work uh, to where kids ask, you know, what is this? You know, what is that? So it's easier to talk about it because that's what I grew up with and that's what I know. And it's easy to sit down and draw those forms and, and, and put it in color and lines and things. I don't have to research it, you know. I think if you, I know that kids and young people like what I do the way I do it, the, 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 the unique portrayal of what is culture and what is Navajo and what is, um, um, in color, has movement, has balance, has uh, a trace of, you know, or indicates life, you know. And I hope that they uh, emulate or, or pretend to, or copy it or whatever, because it gives them a start, you know.
And it took a lot of work, you know, effort to, to get somewhere, you know. You, not only did it take just me, you know, because I painted pretty, pretty pictures, and all the people that supported the idea and, and grew with me as clients for the last 40, 50 years, they're the ones that bragged on me, like if they bought, bought, bought a, a piece of artwork or saw what I did and they shared it with uh, probably, I don't know how many people. So imagine taking a million people, buying something and multiplying that by another million. How many people around the world have your work, you know? It took them to to make me work a little bit harder and do more. Um, I think those people are my, my uh, I guess, to, to profile anybody. I guess there are probably a million people out there in the yard. <laughs> All of them did something, you know, said something. or um, That's what makes me, you know.